we welcome you. We're so glad you're with us today. Buckle your seat belts because you're in for a trip today. Amen. Hallelujah. So let's all stand, if you will. Father, we just bless you for today. We thank you for what you're going to do in our midst. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's praise the Lord. Glory to God.
We heard Mary, we had Larry Lee, but then we had heard Dr. Hickey teach on the on, on, on uh, the Lord's Prayer. How you start out praising God. You know, our Father which are in heaven, start out with praise. Then and then you work your way through. And one of the things is starting out with praise back then was you started going through the names of Jehovah. And you started praising him. And I tell you right now, we used to do that every morning and still right now to this day. We still do that, not every morning, but most mornings. We thank you, Father God, that today you are Jehovah Sid K. Newt, our righteousness. Jehovah Yom Kadesh, our sanctifier. You're Jehovah Shalom, our peace. Jehovah Shalom, our God that will never leave us nor forsake us. You're Jehovah Jireh, our God that sees and our God that provides. You're Jehovah Rapha, our healer. Jehovah Rohi, our shepherd. Glory to God. You are Jehovah Nisi, the banner that is over us. Because there is no God like Jehovah. There is no God like Jehovah. There's no God like Jehovah. There's no God like Jehovah. Father, we do thank you today that we know that you are our God, Jehovah. You are Jehovah Zidkenu, our righteousness. You are Jehovah Yom Kadesh, our sanctifier. Jehovah Shalom, our peace, to where we have nothing lacking, nothing missing. Glory to God. You're Jehovah Shammah, our God that will never leave us for the same. You're Jehovah Jireh, our God that sees You're Jehovah Rapha, our healer. Jehovah Rohi, our shepherd. You're Jehovah Nisi. You're the banner that when the enemy comes in, like a flood, you raise up a banner. Jehovah Nisi, we thank you for that today. We just give you glory. Your Elohim, El Shaddai, glory to God. And we bless you. You're Yahshua. And we thank you for it. Everybody shout, Amen. Well, glory, glory, glory. Well, you may be seated. Hallelujah. Pastor Paul, would you give me an Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Woo, I just couldn't stand it. I had to come up. I know y'all had another song playing this morning, but, you know, when the anointing hits, ain't no need of going on to anything else. Amen. And I tell you, you need to take hold of the fact that He is Jehovah and that there is no God like Jehovah. No God like Jehovah. And that if you'll take hold of who He really is, our righteousness, our sanctifier. But here's the awesome thing about it is sometimes we just say, well, you know, God provides. Well, He does. But here's a neat thing about Jehovah Jireh. It says that God sees and provides. What does God see? God sees when we bring something to Him. God sees when we lift our hands and we worship Him. God sees when we obey Him. God sees when we love and forgive. God sees when we walk in His Word. But also, if you remember when Jesus went to the temple with His disciples, the Bible says that He sat down over next to the treasury. (laughs) Why? Because God sees what we do when it comes time for giving. God sees it. And when our God sees it, Jehovah Jireh sees it, then he does provide. No ifs, ands, and buts about it. He provides. My wife and I 
have lived this way ever since we found out who Kenneth Hagin was, Kenneth Copeland was, who Marilyn Hickey was. When we found out all the, what these people taught, the uncompromising Word of God, my wife and I have lived not on our paycheck, we've lived on our giving. When we couldn't afford to give, we gave. When all I had to give one night was an IOU. I knew that offering was anointed. All I could do was write an hour. I had no money. We had no money in the bank. You know, why didn't you write a check? Well, it wouldn't have, it would have, it would have been, I could have just bought, bounced it on up to the platform. But I wrote an IOU. And then I, the next $100 I got, I sent it in, and God supernaturally blessed us. You live by your gift. Why? Because Jehovah Jireh sees <laughs> and provides. Amen. So there's three ways to give at Agape Faith Church. One is you can give by envelope. If you're on the front row, the envelopes are underneath the chair. If you're in the seat, there are envelopes in the seat in front of you. And if you give by cash or check like I still do, then I still write my check for my tithes and offerings. And, uh, and if you give by check or cash, then please use an envelope. Or if you want to use your credit card or debit card, you can use an envelope by filling out all the, all the little blocks. Please write legibly if you don't mind. We would appreciate it. Kathy would appreciate that. And then you can also give online. You can give on the website, gopifaith.com. Yeah. And just slash give. And just follow the steps that they tell you to do. And uh, you can give that way. And then, of course, you can text to give. You know, Pastor Barr, you know, prides himself in the fact that he's gotten to where he can text to give. Hallelujah. So you can text to give by 45777. And I promise you this, that when you sow seed in good ground, God sees and God provides. Amen. Let's thank Him for it this morning. Father, we thank You today. We just thank You for this opportunity that we have to bring our gifts to you, our tithes, our offerings, and to worship you. And we thank you, Father God, that you are Jehovah Jireh. You are our God that you see as we worship you today with our giving, and then, Father, that you provide every need, every desire of every believer's heart. We thank you for doing that today. In Jesus' name. Everybody say amen. If you're with us for the first time this morning, we're so blessed to have you with us today. Can you just wave at me or whatever? We thank you. Thank y'all. Thank y'all. Thank y'all. We've been expecting you to come. We didn't know when you were coming, and we're sure glad you chose today. And we welcome you today to Agape Faith Church, a church. We believe a church alive. Amen. It's a matter of life or death where you go to church. Amen. And we're so blessed you're here today. As soon as the service is over today, if you'd go out to our Connect Center, we've got a gift we'd like to bless you with. And, and uh, Pastor Dawson, Gladys will meet you out there. And they say, we'll give you a hug and a mug. Hallelujah. We've got a mug we'd like to bless you with, but we're also going to give you a hug. Hallelujah. And so we're thankful that you are here. Today when you leave, if you're giving by envelope, and then you can just drop it in the basket on your way out. Last night, I haven't even shared this with Marilyn. I wanted to let her see this when we see it. I got home last night, and I got a text from Pat Bailey, who you all know is here on Mother's Day and who travels all over the world. And she sent me a testimony of this girl that had been, <clears throat> she was dealing with cancer, had not been able to walk, had not been able to get up, and she sent me this testimony from last night. And they were watching the they were watching online last night. Can y'all show that right now? So we bless them now. She's walking Jesus like she could not walk before. Amen, she couldn't amen. do that. Give she was God taking like Lord. a fraction of an inch amen. steps like a zombie. Amen. And look at her now. Look at her now. She the power of God came from the television, Pastor JB. Well, Hit her in the chair. She, she, can you show them how you got up out of the chair, Yolanda? You see that? She couldn't do that. Do it again, Yolanda. 
<laughs> she couldn't do that. She got shocked. It's, it shocked her. My God. Come on. Please, this is God. Isn't that awesome, Dr. Hickey? And in the text that she sent me, she said, they were watching, and all of a sudden, it just she said it felt like something shot out of the TV and hit her, and she just hopped up out of the chair. Glory to God, where she couldn't get up out of the chair before. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I hope you're ready today. I hope you're expecting today. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. As we get ready to receive Dr. Marilyn Hickey, please receive this video that will touch your heart in Jesus' name.
Thank you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Woo. Hallelujah. You can be seated. It is a great, great blessing to be here. Now, you don't know this probably, but I was born in Texas, so I have southern blood. So I fit in very well with you. Amen? Amen. I want you to say this. You fit well. You fit well. <laughs> Thank you. I'm glad you told me that because I thought it anyway. Okay. <laughs> now, I want to minister to you on it's not over until you win and what it takes to win. And I like this. If you get around and help winning people, it helps you win. Some way it, you get infected. So I got involved with the Osbournes, and they were going to nations. Now, Wally and I began to sow in their ministry, and now I ended up going to the countries they went to. You know, I didn't try to do it. It just happened. Amen? And so winning is a big deal, and I believe we all want to be winners. Put your hand on your heart. Say, I am a winner. God says it. I believe it. Now, I gave you notes. Do you have notes? No? Yes? No notes. Well, you can take notes. So smile at someone who has paper. And just say, you know, I'd like to borrow or a pen. Okay. Number one, what I have found, how to win, you have to persevere. You can't start it one day, and because it doesn't happen in a week, you give it up. So there were things that I spoke into being, and John 3.34 says, For the one whom God has sent speaks the words of God, for God does not give the spirit without measure. So you don't know how to give up. So would you smile at someone? You're very nice looking, so just smile. Say, it's not over until you win. Now, if you have the spirit of God, how many of you, you know you have Jesus inside, you have the presence of the Holy Spirit. Would you wave at me? Good. Now, that means that you keep speaking the word, and I do it. I have that little speak the word booklet, and I speak those promises. I spoke them this morning when I got up with coffee. That's very important. Okay, so what does that do? There are things that I have not gotten to do yet that I'm going to get to do still. I just don't know how to give up. So look at someone and say, honey, you don't know how to give up. <laughs> okay. So I put notes here. You persevere. A person can dream all they want, but th if they're not willing to work hard, those dreams will never become reality. I learned at a very young age that it's important to work hard. Now, my family, my father, German, so I remember when he told me, you know, you're old enough now, and we lived on an apple farm in Pennsylvania. He said, you can buy your own clothes. I thought, what? And so he said, you can sell apples. But I learned to tithe, and that was very key. So how old was I? Very young when I began to tithe. Do you think that helped my life? No question that it did. And when I wanted to go to college, you know, my father said, get a scholarship. I'm not paying for it. So I did. And I got my master's <laughs> with scholarships. So you can dream all you want to, but you have to work hard. So if you think, oh, well, it just fell on her. It didn't fall on me. <laughs> I fell on it. <laughs> okay. And Romans 5.17 says, For if by the trespass of one man death reigned through that one man, how much more will those who receive God's abundant provision of grace and of the gift of righteousness reign in life through the one Jesus Christ? Now, there are things that I haven't gotten to do yet, 
But the game is not over till I win. Right? Put your hand on your heart. Say, I will never forget. The game is not over until I win. So I have some adopted children that are not born again yet, but they will be. Amen? Amen. Because I believe, and you believe, and sometimes you want to slap them sideways. You get so tired of the way they act, but you don't give up on the word and you don't slap them. Okay. Because of Jesus, you can reign in life and fulfill the vision he has given you. And so I remind myself that every morning. So I get up every morning early. I fix coffee. It's very necessary. I have to have coffee. And then I speak promises. And promises work with problems. So whosoever shall say to this mountain, be thou removed, cast in the sea, shall not doubt in his heart, but believe the things which he saith shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith. What do you speak in the morning? Oh, dear, another day? No. This is another miracle day. So put your hand on your heart. Say, I cannot forget. This is a miracle day. Now, if you're to be successful in anything, you have to be persistent. So there are some things, some nations I haven't gone to yet that I'm going to go to, and I'm not dying till I get there. And I'm going to have meetings there. Now, this is a real advantage to me. Do you know that Saudi Arabia loves old women? So I fit very well. You know, I'm old. So they love me. I'm coming to see them. And you have to really hold tight with it. And now, television. When I first tried to get on television, they said to me, you are not television material. Well, God didn't know that. So if he didn't know it, I don't know it. So I kept knocking at the door, and I got in. And, you know, the, the man who got me, I just wouldn't give up. You know, he became a Christian. So you don't give up. So don't just accept a closed door, right? Amen. So how many of you have some closed doors? You have some loved ones that aren't saved. There's some money you need to have. You just have some closed doors. Only a few of you, so I'll only pray for a few of you. Okay? How many of you have some closed doors you want to open? And you'd like to see them open this morning. And so we're going to sow in faith, right? So pray with me. Say, Father, I have faith in your word. This game is not over until I win. Amen. So let me tell you about the process. I wanted to go to Hungary. And a man had said to me, you know, there are getting spirit-filled in Hungary, Budapest, and would you like to go there? Oh, I said, yes. You know, you say, well, did you feel led? I always feel led. So, you know, I start out with yes, yes, yes. So they asked them if they would like for me to come, and they said, no, we don't believe in women. I said, God does. Would you pray again? They said, okay. Isn't that something? They said, okay. So they prayed. Now, I don't know how many times I've been to Hungary. That church now runs over 18,000 people. Honey, you don't know how to give up until you win. And you need faith friends that you can confess your faith to, and they don't give up. There are some places I want to go. I'm not going to die till I get there. So why give up? We're winners. Point to yourself. Say, I am a winner. And that's very important for you to know. So I got into Hungary. And at that time, it was a communist country. And when I first got in, it didn't seem like the people liked me. 
But now I'm their favorite. <laughs> and Benny Hinn goes there, and I said, I opened it for you, so Benny, you better be grateful. <laughs> so, you know, there are a lot of things that you can do. And like Pakistan, you know, Pakistan, do you think they believe in women? They're Muslim. Do you think Muslims love women? Do you? No, but they love me. But I began confessing it. I love Muslims, and Muslims love me. You know, you say, did you see it? No. We're, we're faith people. Amen. Amen? Put your hand on your heart. Say, I'm a faith person. A faith person. And so I eventually got in, and Pakistan, and I am one of their very favorite. They love for me to come to Pakistan. You say, well, why would they love you? I'm old. <laughs> and they love old women. So how many of you want to be loved? Say, I'm very popular. I'm very loved. <laughs> Amen? Amen? And folks, say that when you get up in the morning. I am so popular today. This is my popular day. And so I speak promises, you know, of what I want in the day. And so you start the day with the promise. And then the promise takes care of the problem. Put your hand on your heart. Say, I will never forget. The promise takes care of the problem. Now, I don't feel always spiritual in the morning, especially when there's a two-hour time change from Denver, Colorado to here. But I am spiritual because just because I change time doesn't mean I change faith. I have faith, right? And so we walk in faith. So there are some things that I tell you, I just... They didn't happen. They just didn't happen. And then I'm going to ask Stephen if he would come and share about CBS. And you know what CBS is, do you? Stephen, come help us. He'll tell you what CBS is. I love CBS, and CBS loves me. <laughs> okay. I remember, I remember. <laughs> Time. I love Muslims, and Muslims love me. I love the countries that shut their doors, but those doors are going to open, and they love me. And then she started talking about, you know, we're going to have some tremendous exposure, not just for Maryland Hickey Ministries, but for the Word of God to go throughout the world. We're going to have exposure on national, international networks. So she started saying, I love CBS and they love me. I love CNN, <laughs> CNN loves me. I love Fox News, Fox News loves me. Well, you know, like, uh, she, like Marilyn said, uh, God, God didn't know that a woman can't go to Pakistan. Uh, God doesn't <laughs> believe that uh, women have to just sit down and be quiet and, and let the men do all the preaching around the world. So Marilyn believes what her father believes. And so she believed that she was going to go in. So we have a, a short video that we want to show you this morning. And this is about Marilyn going into Pakistan. And I think Marilyn started in the 1980, late 80s or 90s, early early 90s going into Pakistan, yeah. had small meetings when she started. And when she first went in, Marilyn, I love it because you always say, I went in, I didn't know what I was doing. You know, she was on the platform, God, what do I do next? What do I say? She's all covered in their national dress, and here's this woman speaking publicly in Pakistan. It's something that was very, very unusual, and God has now has used Marilyn to open that door for many others to go in, and we count that a tremendous blessing. So when she first went in, uh, one of the gentlemen in her very first crusade, he gave his heart to Jesus that night. And that gentleman, over the last 20 plus years, now has grown with his family. He has built the largest Christian church in Pakistan. Tens of thousands attend every Wednesday night and every Sunday morning. He has become a supporter and calls Marilyn mom. 
and he has built also two satellite networks that go all over the world, North America, South America, Australia, Asia, Africa, and he's doing a great work because Maryland was willing to go. Why? Because it's not over until you win. And the same thing for you here this morning. You may have a dream. You may have a seed in your heart. And maybe sometimes you feel like you're going to give up on that. And you can't do that. Maryland kept believing and kept seeding into those countries, praying over Pakistan every single day. And God brought it to pass. So she started having her meetings in Pakistan. And then it was about three years ago, Marilyn said, I'm going to have over one million people in my meeting in one night, not adding it up over two or three nights, and God is going to do the biggest thing Pakistan has ever seen for his kingdom. So we started claiming that, we started believing that, and we didn't believe that it would be over until we won. And that's what God did in Karachi, Pakistan, one of the terrorist capitals of the world, Maryland was able to host a healing meeting on a Friday evening, and over one million gatherers came to the meeting, sitting on the grounds. The governor shut down the streets. The newspaper welcomed Maryland as well as the governor and also the grand imam, the top Islamic cleric of all of Pakistan, was on the platform and welcomed Dr. Hickey. Now, there's something not right about that. I mean, how does the top Islamic cleric Welcome Dr. Hickey on a national platform in Pakistan because he knows that Maryland loves Christians, loves Muslims, loves atheists, and wants to reach across the aisle and love them all unconditionally. She said, it's not over until I win. And that night, the kingdom of God won. Over one million people, almost 80% of them were Muslims who attended. And out of that figure, 70, over 72% of those gave their hearts to Jesus. So we want to, amen, give God the glory for that. Isn't that awesome? Isn't that awesome? And Marilyn, I remember, I remember when she asked them to stand if you wanted to have Jesus in your heart. And you really, I mean, I wasn't surprised, but I was surprised. Here's a grand mom in Pakistan sitting behind her. And she says, I want you to know that there is only one way to heaven. And that is through the name of Jesus Christ, there is one Savior. And they started shouting and clapping. Of course, by that time, so many thousands have been healed, had already seen blinded eyes open, people that were lame were beginning to walk, children that were born with deformities, the deformities walked themselves out. It was absolutely electrifying because they came with anticipations. And of course, the Muslim world, they believe in Jesus. They believe he's their second highest prophet. He's their healing prophet. So it's easy to talk with a Muslim because we have a lot in common with them. He's our healing He's our healing prophet too, isn't he? But Marilyn took it further and she said, he is the savior and the only one. So she said, if you want to receive Jesus, get into paradise. There's only one way and it's to accept him above all others. I want you to stand. And Marilyn, I was so surprised. It looked like the entire congregation stood as far as you can see a sea of people. And she said, now I don't think you understood. I'm only wanting you to stand If you're accepting Jesus as your personal Savior, he is the only way to make it into heaven. No one gets to the Father except by me. And when she said, now I want you to sit down if you're not going to believe that, but if you're believing that, stand up. And family, more people stood up when she said that. It took over a year to complete the follow-up. So when Marilyn mentioned about CBS... What happened that night with over a million people in attendance, healings and miracles, salvations, baptisms in the Holy Spirit, it was just phenomenal. We got back home to here in America, and Marilyn said, Stephen, I don't think God is finished with this. So she sent me off to New York City in December that year. I went off to New York. I met with CNN, Fox News, CBS, NBC, ABC, radio, television, And when I got back home, I got a phone call from CBS News. They said, we want to be the first to get your story because we know the other news networks are going to pick you up. And I says, well, tell me more about this. And they said, Stephen, we want to do a story on Dr. Marilyn Hickey and the 
peace that she is bringing around the world and building bridges from Christians to Muslims sharing the love of Jesus. CBS did not compromise the story at all. And the gentleman who called me was J.B. Brown. James Brown is CBS Sports, formerly of Fox News Sports for all those years. And J.B. is a great believer. He loves Jesus so much. And he said, Stephen, we want to do this. The CBS News president wants to make this story a feature story in prime time on CBS. So in the video you're about to see, you're going to see the million people who attended, over a million in that meeting. And it's going to be followed at the end, a little bit of the report. It's much longer on CBS News, but this is just a couple minutes snippet of J.B. Brown talking with Marilyn in Pakistan with us. And, you know, Marilyn is echoing another thing now, saying it's not over till she wins, because she mentioned Saudi Arabia. And Saudi Arabia, as Marilyn says, I always smiles. She says, you know, they love old women. Well, Marilyn, I think that's true for sure. They honor older people. But I think they love you for a lot more reasons than because of your age. They love you because you love them and you shine with the love of Jesus. And she says, I'm going to be going into Saudi Arabia. We're working for the borders now to open because of COVID. And we have the invitation from the Grand Imam of Saudi Arabia, who's good friends with the Grand Imam in Pakistan. And Marilyn Hickey is about to walk in in a few months. And we're going to start taking over that nation. Can you say amen? Amen. And then here's some other news. Here's some other news. I got a phone call just recently again. This is the second time that J.B. Brown has called me. And he said, Stephen, I want you to know that when Saudi Arabia is ready, CBS News wants to go back in because we want to do a follow-up story on Marilyn Hickey and how she's covering the earth with the word. This is a secular news network that is sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. So enjoy this video. I want to tell you something. No one may know your name, but Jesus knows your name. Pastor Anwar, my son, <laughs> who puts me on television here, and all over the world, with Sarah. I said, I love Muslims, and Muslims love me. ही देती हूं ये देखे मेरी बेटी ये एक साल की होने वाली है और इसकी आंख का सारा ट्यूमर खत्म हो चुका है और खुदावन ने इसे जिंदगी दी है खुदावन ने इसे सेहत दी है और मैंने खुदावन से वादा किया था मैंने कहा खुदावन दा मुझे मुझे एक मौका दे दे कि तू मेरी बच्ची को शफा दे मैं नाच नाच के तेरी गवाही दूंगी और मैं नाच नाच के गवाही दूंगी
Traveling in Lahore is unlike anything that I've personally experienced. I would describe it as controlled chaos, a maze of traffic consisting of the ever-present motorbikes. And as we make our way around with Marilyn Hickey, security is ever-present. Hickey has become an unofficial ambassador to Muslim countries. And she's found a kindred spirit in the Grand Imam of Lahore, one of the most powerful spiritual leaders in Pakistan. Today, he welcomes her for tea at his home. And to see the collaboration with Marilyn Hickey, who may as well just be called Ambassador Mom, is really pretty significant. The fact that the Grand Imam is not ashamed to be seen publicly with her or with Pastor Anwar really speaks volumes of their commitment to these, this interfaith effort at peace worldwide. I love Muslims. Muslims love me. And I think... I think that's a God thing. The politicians, they are coming with their own programs, their own agendas. But when it comes to the religious leader, when it comes to the mom, so she brings love for the people of Pakistan. So I understand and I'm convinced as a religious leader that her love and her visit is more effective than other people. You say your specific aim is not to convert. I don't come in to convert. I come in and believe for transformation. Transformation. Exactly. Because when they receive Jesus, they're transformed on the inside. That's his business. My business is to give the truth. Praise the Lord. Now, I want you to take a little piece of paper and write down one thing you would, that would be a big miracle for you. Maybe it's a healing, maybe it's someone's salvation, but just write down one. I know you could do a dozen, but write down one because we're going to believe for it. Faith has to be exercised. We don't just talk about it. We exercise it, right? So we're going to exercise faith this morning in what you're believing for. Because I didn't come here to entertain you. I came here to provoke you. I'm going to provoke you to believe for bigger things. And I want to believe with you. I, I like big faith. I, in fact, they call me crazy faith. So I'm crazy faith. I think you are too. I think this church is, frankly. You're kind of crazy faith. Am I right? Yes. You act like it. Okay. Write it down. It's quite a delight to be here. Thank you for inviting me. My second time. <laughs> Thank you. You know, faith pleases God. So when I'm believing for big things, I know I'm pleasing God. And I'm believing for scriptural things. You know, God wants people to be saved. God wants nations to be shaken. God wants you to prosper. Is that right? You know, it take lot, takes lots of money for us to do the things we do. But I'm telling you, God is faithful. He is so faithful. So if people say it's impossible, I, I don't go there. I just stay in all things are possible with God. Amen? Did you write yours down? Just one. Now stand up. Stand up. I want to join my faith with yours. So hold it in your hand. Say, God, God all, things all things are possible. I believe, I believe this, morning this morning is a breakthrough, is a, breakthrough a, turnaround a turnaround in my life. In, my life. in Jesus' name. This is not an accident. This is a divine appointment. In Jesus' name. Now turn around and look at me. Turn all the way around and look at me. Say, this is my turnaround morning. I believe God is working powerful things. Amen. Amen. It's not an accident we're doing this, folks. It's a divine appointment. Okay, you can be seated. Now, I think to win, you have to surrender fully to God. 
So Joshua 1, 9, I put this in here. Have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous, do not be afraid, do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. So when Stephen and I went into Pakistan, uh, Stephen, could you come back up? Do you mind? Uh, we had, was it 127 men who took an oath to kill us? Well, they, they, they did say that it went into the hundreds, but what they did, and this is in 2005, this one trip was in Islamabad, Rawalpindi, and uh, Maryland. That's not where we had the million people. This is a few years before that. And uh, we had the stadium planned for the following night. Uh, the big stadium was given to us by the president of Pakistan. And we had a training school with over 3,000 pastors during the day that we were training, provided books in their languages, and uh, were training them to go out and to evangelize with love the country of Pakistan. So when we were there, we got a phone call, at, well, a visit, actually, at our hotel in Islamabad, and they said, Stephen, they said, we need to have uh, you come out with the national chairman to the presidential palace to meet with what is their secret service. I think it's the SSI. And uh, what they said is tomorrow morning in the newspapers, you're going to see, you're going to see that... Um, there was going to be an assassination attempt on Dr. Hickey and your team. They had stormed a terrorist compound, the police in Pakistan, and uh, it was supported by hundreds, really. So when Marilyn said over 100, yes. And in that particular compound were 32 members, of which they were able to arrest 16 suicide bombers. They found on the table, the planning table, they found the blueprints of the stadium, and they had six or eight red X's, two of them on the platform where Marilyn and I would be, and those were the specific targets where the suicide bombers would set themselves off in the stadium as well as outside. They also found on the table, they found four photographs. Now, these photographs were interesting because they were taken from inside Pakistan. So they didn't lift up, they didn't lift Marilyn Hickey's picture off the internet. They actually took it while she was walking around the city while we were in Pakistan. They had one of Marilyn Hickey, they had one of myself, one of our media director, a television director, and one of the Pakistanis national chairmen that, that we appointed. Those were on the table so they would make sure that they targeted us for sure. Well, they said, we want you to close down the meeting tomorrow night. We can't allow that to happen because it's too dangerous. But you know what? God has keen ideas because we don't give up until we win. Marilyn says, I think you need to go home, Stephen. Joe, I think you need to go home. Let's go call your wives and let's share with them what happened. Our wives felt the same way that we did. It's not over until we win. We didn't go to Pakistan to come home. We went to Pakistan to deliver the message of Jesus Christ, healing, resurrection, ascension, and intercession for you and your family and your friends. So we went into prayer, didn't we? And God did a powerful thing. So they arrested them the next morning. It was in all the newspapers. It was on the international news as well. You still can go back and look at that. And um, so what we had happened, because we couldn't have the stadium, so what do we do? All the advertising had gone out saying that the big healing meeting would be in the stadium, and here's the address. And so what did we do? We didn't give up. We kept believing God was going to perform a miracle. And we had Father James who was the head of all the Catholics in Islamabad and his Catholic cathedral and compound, he came and visited us at the hotel. And he says, Marilyn and Stephen, he says, I feel so sad in my heart that these suicide bombers have messed up what God was planning to do. But he said, God spoke to my heart that I'm to be a part of the solution for you. And we said, we're listening. And then he said, I want to give you my cathedral, give you my compound, which is a lot of acreage, and I want you to have your healing meeting on my compound. And I want you to know the next night, within 24 hours, we were able to build a platform outside the cathedral, pack out the cathedral, build a platform outside with a live feed, 
And in the next two nights, each night, we had over 45,000 people, by word of mouth, pack out the compound, and we had salvations in the tens of thousands that happened. So, family, what Marilyn is trying to share with you tonight, this morning, rather, and myself, is we don't give up. We may be cast down. Maybe we've been stomped on. Maybe we've had suicide bombers target us. And I believe that there are folks in the room this morning, Marilyn, that you have suicide bombers targeting your vision. You have suicide bombers that are coming after your dream. And the devil wants to explode and destroy your dream. But God sent, I believe, Mama Hickey here today to tell you it's not over till you win. Just like Joseph, when he was in prison in Egypt, it wasn't over. He didn't say, poor old me, and sit down. What did he do? He rose up. He rose up and he became a powerful man in the prison. He became the top person there assisting the guard. He interpreted and sowed into other people's dreams. And then finally, he was remembered a few years later and he was called out of prison. He interpreted for the Pharaoh. Well, you know the rest of the story. It is not over until you win. So what you put on your piece of paper, you may feel this morning that it is over. You may feel that it's never going to come to pass. That marriage is never coming together. That spouse is never coming in. I'm never going to get pregnant. My children are never coming back to God. My job is never going to get any better. The dream God gave me for my future isn't happening. But we're here to share with you this morning that you've got somebody in your corner. You've got not only Jesus, but you've got Marilyn Hickey and her team. And we've been praying for this church for many, many months coming up on this message. So it is going to happen for you tonight. Today. We don't want to wait till tonight, do we? No. See, she stays after me all the time. You know, I, if I just slip a little bit, she's right there to correct me back again. Thank you, Marilyn. Thank you, dear. So, are all things possible to him that believeth? You know, I think hanging around faith people is dangerous. When you hang around faith people, they're contagious. You know, something happens to you. So I think your being here this morning is a divine appointment. I really do. Do you? Do you? Well, stand up again. Turn around. Say, this is my divine turnaround. <laughs> Amen. 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 You can be seated. Okay, now Joshua 1.9 says, Have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous, do not be afraid, do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. You know, I think one of the big deals we have to deal with is discouragement. I don't believe in it, and I don't believe in listening to people who discourage me. Well, you can't do it. You're too old. Really? God didn't tell me that. So shut up. And so I think there are times we have to be very explicit in it. And I believe my best is ahead. I believe I'm going to have some of the biggest meetings I've ever had because they like old women. So it's a real positive for me, especially in Saudi Arabia. And I think when I got spirit-filled and I began to speak in tongues, that's when things began to turn around for me. And I, how many of you speak in tongues? Every day? Every morning? Okay, stand up. You say, is this an exercise class? <laughs> yeah, kind of. For you, I'm not standing up. So let's just speak in tongues for a few moments, okay? Kashalara banda bara bara boko sorobi. Daba shana mara banda bara boko sorobi. La kasorobi. Vi kisi kisi de biki so bara bakaya. Ara mara boko sorobi. Bara bara boko sorami de bandi ba. Keep speaking, you can speak. Ara baka sorobanda bara biki sorobi. Should we sing a little bit? 
Kilada Sarai Lira Basorabi Dibelshina Soli Hasikizi. Now it's hard for you, but do it anyway. You say, Well, I'm off key, that's okay. Dasha Labaro Ishana Maso Arabakoko Edibikuso in the Kigapo, what I back also dish does Larabo Larabo Koshi. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, say this all things are working together for good for me in Jesus' name, amen. Okay, you can be seated. You think I'm crazy? I am. I'm crazy, Faith. So I think vision brings provision. You know what I'm saying? You say, well, there are things I have a vision for, but I don't have the provision. But your vision brings the provision. So in my early days, I remember I needed money, you know, because my husband said, you know, it's your baby. You know, I'm for you, but I'm not going to feed it. You have to believe for your finances. And I thought, good night, he's selfish. How ugly he is. So I am calling out to the Lord, change my husband. Ugh. <laughs> Honestly. And so uh, we are going to have lunch with an older couple. And so... You know, I think they want me to pray for them for something. And she turned to her husband and she said, Honey, write Marilyn a check for $10,000. I said, Honey, do it. <laughs> and so, you know, I've had God meet finances in really unusual ways. So let me tell you another one because I know you need finances. I understand that. So we're... I'm overseas, and I'm needing $30,000 for my meeting that I'm going to do. And I'm in Indonesia, and, you know, I'm getting ready to leave. And a lot, I find God is last minute. Have you found that? Sometimes he makes me nervous. <laughs> oh, you're so last minute. So I'm getting ready to leave. I'm sitting in the lobby, and they're going to pick me up to take me, you know, to get my flight. And a man is sitting there, and he said, are you Marilyn Hickey? I said, yes, I am. And so we talked a little bit. He said, well, I feel led to give you $30,000. I said, I feel led to receive it. <laughs> and so God has so many unusual ways you know, imagine a man, a stranger, writing a check for $30,000. He spoke English in another country. Say, God is wonderful. So get your faith out there. You have a big God. He that wants to do big things for you. Right? Right. Okay. Now, I think, and I'm giving you 1 Corinthians 4.13. We have the same spirit of faith. According to what is written, I believed and therefore I spoke. We believe and speak. This is a faith church. I don't have to come here to build faith. You've already got it. You just jump into it with me. It's so wonderful. So we're speaking to circumstances and we're getting turnarounds. And so when we open our mouth, we speak life. So point to your mouth. Say, there's life in my mouth. And I think my saying, I love Muslims and Muslims love me. Now I find out they love old women. That's really something. Don't you agree? Wow, we. And the practice of speaking God's word. And I don't know if we have any more of those back there, but Take it. If you're not speaking promises every morning, that's very important. And do it in the morning. Don't wait till night. Start your day in faith. 
Don't wait till it gets nighttime and then you think, oh, what an ugly day. Get your day cooking before it gets ugly. Right? right. Speaking the promise. So I heard Kenneth Hagan when I was a young pastor's wife. And this is what I thought. If the word can work that way for him, it can work that way for me. So I have been in faith teaching and I have been in all of these countries and I haven't been killed and I've been threatened plenty of times, but they love me. They don't want to kill me. They like me. And so I think keeping in the process of faith is very key. Everyone say keeping in the process of faith is very key. Now, I like this, especially about this church. You want to reach the lost, right? You have a heart for the lost, here and overseas. And that is wonderful. And so I have a friend, and so he said, you know, I, I'm going to have uh, big international healing meetings. So I said, okay, Jim. Uh, do you witness to your neighbors? Well, no, no, I'm going to have big meetings. But it starts with process, winning your neighbors. So I do coffees with cookies, and I invite unsaved people. And I don't try to witness to them. They say to me, Wh what is it you do? Well, I'm on television. Yeah, but why do you do that? Well, I have Jesus in my heart, and I get to lead them to Christ. So I'm always, and on airplanes, I have a card that tells you how to get saved. And so, you know, they'll say on a plane, you sit by somebody, and uh, they'll say to you, what do you do? Well, I teach the Bible on television. Really? Why do you do that? my opportunity. And I tell you, there's nothing like leading somebody to the Lord. It's almost like getting saved all over again. Amen? So stand up, because let's believe in the next seven days you're going to win somebody. So pray. Put your hand on your heart. Say, Father, I love sinners, and they just love me. And in the next seven days, Give me favor and let me lead someone to Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. You can be seated. Okay. Now, again, I didn't start with a million people in Pakistan. I started with little home Bible studies. Is that special? You think it could be God? He wants to stop right now and receive an offering? Wow. Oh, man, we, we've been interrupted. It's a divine interruption. So if you would like to sow a seed, because I'm getting ready to go overseas again. And again, I'm old, and they like me <laughs> It's so crazy. They like me because I'm old. So I'm going to use everything I can use to win souls. And I want you to pray right now what kind of a seed he would have you sow. And so how do you want them to make it out, Pastor? Divinely that a, interrupted. That was a divine interruption. Amen. So they're, if you're giving by cash, seriously, we want to receive an offering right now for what? for the international ministry that she's involved in. She wants this to go to help her continually to go around the world. She's old. <laughs> and they love old right. women. I don't think she's old, glory to God. <laughs> now, you know, but she's old. She says that. And my, we don't know what, you just reached level 90. You just reached the level 90. July 1st. July 1st, level 90. 90. We don't know what old is. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. 
But if you want to plant seed, what Marilyn said just a moment ago, I just wrote down, I'd never heard it that way. No, Steve said it, I think. Somebody said it. And uh, we weren't standing or turning around when they said it. But they did say, Joseph sowed into someone else's dream. I think yeah, Steve said that. I said it. Joseph sowed into some. <laughs> Marilyn said that. Okay, Marilyn said that. Yeah. All right, praise God. He sowed in the dreams of others. He sowed into the dreams of others. Right, he did. When, when really, to be honest with you, he could have been discouraged, but he didn't. And he sowed into the dream of others. And then, how many of you know, then his dream came to pass. So if you want a dream to come to pass, we as Agape Faith Church are going to sow. As a church, not just you individually, but as a church are going to sow. We want you to sow into Marilyn Hickey's dream that's been going on for all these years, praise God, that at, at touching nations. So make your checks out to Agape Faith Church, uh, and we'll make sure that they get every dime that comes in. And uh, if you're giving online, you can, uh, to agape, www.agapefaith.com slash give. Just share there that Marilyn Hickey special offering. Uh, and then text to give to 45777. And then you just text the amount to Agape uh, FC Guest. And that may, we make sure that that goes to uh, Dr. Hickey. Just think about it. As I said last night, as you sow into this offering, then you will be making friends in Pakistan, so, um, um, right. everywhere. Yeah, you're right. Everywhere. Yeah, you're right. And so share, share something else about it, what, you, what you're doing with this. Well, I think because we have opportunity, now that I'm older, <laughs> this is hilarious. I want to go into some of these other countries because I haven't been really welcomed in Saudi Arabia, you know. So getting to go there now because of age is a big deal. So I'm going to knock at the door of some of the others because if I get to go to Saudi, I can say, oh, I just been in Saudi with a healing meeting. And, you know, when I tell them I'm old, they trust me. Isn't that something? I don't think they should trust me. I'm really in there for big things. But anyway, I'm glad I get to go in. So it's a big thing. And I don't know what other doors it will open. But I have a good name. Thank Amen. God. Amen. And that good name helps me get in places. And like J.B. Brown, you know, they want to, their CBS is talking about doing something on my life. Isn't that awesome? Wouldn't that be awesome? So God is cooking, right? So be a part of cooking. Amen. Also, not only can you sow into her ministry today, but out at her book and tape table, there are cards out there that you can become a monthly partner with her. And you can decide on whatever amount you want to sow into her ministry as a monthly partner. Uh, David and Kathy, Charlie and Mitch, will y'all stand? Would y'all stand? The four of you stand. They've worn out your book, speaking, speaking the word. So many. If you've had that book for all these years and you've worn it out, stand up. Our daughter said she had. Stand up. And that book, and you've had it for years. It's just us older people have done that. Hallelujah. But but they 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 all got new ones last night. Hallelujah. So uh, of speaking the word. So. But thank you guys for giving. When you leave today, and we leave in just a moment, we want you to place your offering in the basket on your way out. Those of you that are watching online, you can give online. Just follow the prompts there, and you're able to give. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Anything else? Stephen, you got some announcements about some of the product? You want to bring it up and let everybody see it? You and Patsy, if you will. You got something, darling? Come here. And you know, as we're about to share a little bit about what's at the ministry resource table for you, the most important thing 
of course, and Marilyn said it last night so well. The biggest miracle, the greatest miracle that we want to talk about is giving your life to Jesus Christ. So this morning, we want to make sure that if you haven't made that personal connect with Jesus and invited him into your heart, asking him to forgive you of your sins, you can do that this morning. You can come forward this morning after the service and see one of the pastors. Would that work, Pastor? Yes, sir. We want you to know that you are welcome to Agape Fellowship. This is a church that's going to grow you. They're going to love you. They're going to fellowship with you. And the best thing is every morning they can have that fellowship over coffee and confessions with Jesus. And he can change your life forever. And also a wonderful added blessing is being filled with the Holy Spirit and being able to invite the Holy Spirit in to take control of you, and you'll be able to receive your own prayer language. And that speaking in tongues, speaking in the Spirit, singing in the Spirit, can take you through tremendous, tremendous trials and valleys while you're waiting for your miracle to come pass for you. Amen? Amen. 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 Well, at the product table, there are several books that will be available for you. Seeing Jesus is one of those, and I'm going to pass this off to, to the pastor as well, because I think we want to give you one of these. We Praise gave you God. a workbook last night, but Seeing Jesus Syllabus is showing you Jesus in every book of the Bible, from Genesis to Revelations. It doesn't get much better than that, does it? And then Marilyn's new book that she um, has written about her life, It's Not Over Until You Win. We have that available for you, and Marilyn will be signing copies of this in the lobby immediately after the service. And there's some other good ministry materials as well. So God will make those available for you if you'd like. We also have a couple of Afghan. We have an Afghan, and we have a baby's blanket. And the children's blanket is good for uh, verses that are on there from Marilyn and her daughter Sarah. They prayed over their children. You can wrap up your little kids in this. So those are for gifts to the ministry. Pastor, Hallelujah. thank you. My wife wants to share something. I just want to share one thing. Uh, if, if you've noticed the last two uh, sessions that you've been here, Marilyn talks about praying. Is that right? So that's very important, right? Very important. So we have Wednesday night prayer here, and we're going to pray for you. We're going to put you on our list to pray for. Your hit list. Yes. Hit me every day. Yes. Amen. Yes. Not only Wednesday night, but we're going to start. I'm going to start praying for you. Thank you. Not that that means anything. Oh, it does. It really does. But you change my life. Well, thank you. Come out here where she doesn't have a book around so she can see. When you were in Winston that night, I was teaching us to pray. Prayer, and you said, I want y'all to start praying at the top and let the Holy Ghost lead you where you should stop. And He stopped me and forgiven. And I know you can't get healed if you don't forgive people, clean your heart out. I just want to thank you because I had to get my cleaned out that night, but that helped me in spirit and prayer. I've never seen it like that. We had prayed. You know, all the way down the list, but I'd never seen how the Holy Ghost would grab you and want it in that prayer and hit on it. So thank you. So my privilege. Prayer is everything, isn't it? Yes, ma'am. But I think to get the habit of prayer takes discipline. Yes. And so I learned it from Frida Lindsay. You know, because she made me pray over all the nations in Africa every day for a year. Oh, dear. But that turned me around. Oh. Then I start praying for the world. Praise God. And Praise I start going to the world. Amen.